Hello, here we are, chapter four. We're talking about interpretations of the derivatives in AP Calc. In the last two units, we defined the derivative graphically, algebraically, and numerically as a slope of the tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change at a point. But in this lesson, we want to interpret the meaning of the derivative in a verbal manner as it relates to the context of real world problems. First, let's look at a little bit of history. When Newton was developing his ideas of infinitesimal calculus, he called functions affluent and he called the derivative affluxion. His thinking was mostly concentrated on velocity and particles in space or objects in space. But today we know the derivative's importance reaches into many other areas that involve rates of change. When you look at the Leibniz notation one more time, we're going to think of it in a different way. He stated that the variable y depended on x, and if you had a function y equals f of x, then the derivative could be expressed as dy dx. If we allow ourselves to think of the d part as representing a very small difference in some process, then that helps remind us that the derivative is simply the limit of the ratios in a really familiar form. So when we think about dy dx, it's the change in y values divided by the change in the x values, and that's what produces that instantaneous rate of change over a very small unit. Similarly, we can read d dx as a single symbol, and we can call it the derivative of x, the, or the derivative with respect to x of something. So we could say the derivative with respect to x of y or the derivative with respect to f of x. That Leibniz notation can be a little cumbersome when you need to specify the exact x value where you need to evaluate. But the benefit is that you can read so much about the rate of the change through this expression. That's really important in our course. It's very easy to write f prime of 3, but with Leibniz notation, we, we're going to write the derivative format like this, because that's telling me my function's name is y, my independent variable is x, and I want to find the rate of change when x is 3. So the Leibniz notation really gives us a great glimpse of information. Here in this example, I've already had it written out because I want you to, to see what's going on here. Sean is cleaning out his fresh water, his saltwater fish tank, and he needs to drain some water in order to adjust the saline levels. If the volume of the tank is V, and that's in gallons, and it's being drained over some time T in minutes, we want to interpret the meaning of this derivative the derivative of the volume with respect to time when time is 3, or such that time is 3, is negative 2. So I said that along these lines. Since v prime of t is the slope of the tangent line, then the derivative at 3 equals negative 2 has a meaning that the rate is negative. So to me that says that the water is being drained out of the tank. And it's being drained out of the tank at three minutes. So we could say in a complete sentence, so this is my thinking up here, we could say the interpretation of this statement, this symbolic statement, is at three minutes, the fish tank is being drained at an instantaneous rate of two gallons per minute. And just like any other language course, we need to use the proper name, spelling, and grammar conventions. AP Calc isn't any different than AP Lang. There's many real-world functions that depend on variables other than x, y, and time. So we have to learn to read and write the correct notation, and that will help our success on free response questions through our course and on into the exam. So reading each scenario will put together some meaningful variables 
and interpret what they want us to do. For example, the Alberta tar sands are one of the biggest oil reserves in the world, yet extracting the fossil fuel costs more than the profits made. If the cost in dollars to extract a barrel of oil is losing $3 on every variable, then we want to write the derivative. So I said first, let's let letter C be the cost in dollars, and let's let letter B be the variable. So in this case, we could say we had a function. C is a function of B, or the cost is a function of the number of barrels. And to be able to say that they're losing money, I could say that the rate of change of that function, the derivative of F, is the rate of change of the cost compared to the rate of change of the, bar of the barrels. And they told us it was losing at what, $3 per barrel, so we could write that as $3 per barrel. I apologize for my phone ringing. So the rate of change of the costs with respect to the barrels is negative three, or we could use Leibniz notation and say D C D B at the time T is negative three at some time T. In letter B, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill is regarded as one of the largest environmental disasters in American history. The oil link was found on April 22nd in 2010, and BP originally estimated that the flow rate was about 790 cubic meters per day at the end of the first week. So we wanna say that V is the volume in cubic meters, and T is the time in the days, since it said per, per day, and at the end of the first week, we would say that volume is a function of time. So F prime at the end of the week, that would be seven days, which would be the rate of change of volume with respect to time when time is seven, and they gave that to be 790 cubic meters, so 790 cubic meters per day would be that rate of change. On letter C, we have a mountain population of an endangered gorilla, and they have an ongoing study tracking the number of gorillas since 1992. The population increased by 114 gorillas, so this is a positive rate of change during 2003. So we're going to name the function with variables P and T. So population is the number of gorillas and T is the time in the years. So population is a function of time. And I figured out this is 11 years from 2003 back to 1992. So the rate of change or our derivative at 11 years is the rate of change of the population with respect to time such that time is 11 and it was positive so it's changing at 114 gorillas per year. Wow I'm really popular today all these phone calls. I'm sorry again. So moving on to example three. Suppose a planet is discovered in 2024 and is named Newtonia. If the alien population P of T is recorded in millions of aliens, and T represents the number of years since the planet's discovery, explain the meaning of each of the statements below. Hey, that's wrong with that apostrophe. Just saying. We gotta fix that. Planets, discovery. Okay, I guess that's right. So P prime of three equals a half. That tells me if population is a function of time, population is in millions, and it's a function of time, and time is the years, then P prime of three equals a half would be dp dt, the rate of change of population, 
with respect to time at t equals three years is a half. So that tells me in three years, which would be 2027, the population on Newtonia will be increasing at the rate of a half a million aliens per year because the time was recorded in millions. Now here's one that's an inverse, p prime, no, p inverse seven and a half is five. So thinking about the inverse, when we have the population, time is on the x-axis and population is on the y-axis. But now we've flipped that and population is on the x-axis and time is on the y-axis. So this says when the population is seven and a half million aliens, then five years have passed. So that would be the population is seven and a half million in 2029, which is five years after 2024. In letter C, we have P inverse seven and a half prime. So this is looking at the rate of change at seven and a half. And that's telling us when we come out here to seven and a half million people, whatever that curve is right there, that the derivative so that rate of change at seven and a half is three quarters or 0.75. And verbally that would mean when the population of Newtonia is seven and a half million aliens, it would take three quarters of a year for the population to increase by a million more aliens. Okay. Here we're looking at using units. So in the next few examples, we'll show you how clues from the units can help you recognize scenarios or recognize interpretations of the derivative as they relate to the scenarios. Suppose you launch a water balloon from a giant slingshot and you let S of T give the distance and the distance is in feet that the water balloon traveled from its initial starting point as a function of time, and time is in seconds. So distance is in feet and time is in seconds. We want to explain the meaning of the derivative notation. ds dt at t equals two is s prime of t, and that's 38 feet per second. So this is the rate of change, and when t is two seconds, the water balloon is moving at an instantaneous velocity of 38 feet per second. So let's just remember is if S of T is position and we take the derivative of position, the first derivative is velocity. In example five, we have the total cost, capital C in dollars, so cost in dollars for an airplane flight is a function of the number of passengers. C is a function of the number of passengers. And we can calculate the derivative airlines using that function. What would it mean to say that F prime of 182 is 58? Well, F prime, if C is F of N, then C prime is the F prime of N. So the C prime of 182 equals 58. That just means when I have 182 passengers on the flight that the cost per person for the flight would be $58. Cost is a function of the number of passengers. So the rate is changing at a rate of $58 per passenger when the passengers are 182. That's the instantaneous rate of change. And then in our last example, we have non-potable water, so that means you can't drink the water, is being pumped into a processing center where the depth and feet of the water at time t in hours is given as y equals h of t. So let's get this straight here. We have time in hours on the x-axis, this is in hours, and the depth of the water 
on the y-axis. This is in feet. And we have some function going along. So when we get to seven hours, the height is five feet. This is our x-axis independent variable. This is our y-axis. So y equals h of t, or the h of seven hours is five feet. The non-potable water is five feet deep after seven hours. On the next one, this is talking about the derivative or the rate of change. So that rate of change right here is six tenths. That's telling us that the depth of the water is increasing at the rate of six tenths feet per hour when the time is seven hours. And then here we have the inverse. So remember, everything switches around. Where time was on the x-axis, now we have the depth on the x-axis. That was in feet. And where depth was, this is time now. And time is in hours. So it switched around. Now when the depth is 7, the time is 9. So we could say after 9 hours, the non-potable water at the processing center measures seven feet deep. And then this is the derivative of the inverse. So the derivative of the inverse is telling us when the depth of the water is seven feet, because this is depth, it takes 1.4 hours. So this rate of change, that slope of the tangent line is 1.4. The instantaneous rate of change at seven hours is 1.4 um, feet per hour. So that means it's gonna take 1.4 hours for the depth to increase by one additional foot because the rate of change at seven hours is 1.4 feet per hour. So this lesson is all about interpreting and using the derivative in context that's relatively new to the AP exam. See you next time.